Jibatulo Mishpacha Yisraya Reach David Yisraya sitting here live on this Shabbat Shabbaton as we have gathered here in the city of Yerushalayim and for the powerful revelation of the Torah of Yah the revelation of Yoshua HaMashiach and as the remnant scattered abroad gathers here in Yerushalayim and the Melechim as they have put the shofar to their lips for the most beautiful triumphant entrance of Yoshua HaMashiach let us turn toward Yerushalayim as we hear the sound of the shofar <laughs> What a great blessing it is, Israel, that we may gather and be partakers of the riches of Yah in Yoshua HaMashiach. You are listening to Shemach Yisrael with Riach David Yisrael City Gear live on this Shabbat evening. I want us to understand what the Bokhash is and the basic nature or the ingredients of its definitive. When I said that I would teach on the Bokhash or the missing books, the word Bokhash in its originality, in its Hebraic intent, it is to give us, to afford us the ability to seek, to find that which is lost or missing. And we as a nation of Yisra'ya, we must begin to seek those things which is of imat, truth, of the nature of Yah, to understand the totalness or the totality of the Almighty Yah. And it is done, or the reason of the Bakhash, or these missing writings, it is to cause us to engage in a greater way in our uh, worship, our shakha, and our tefillah, our prayer before Almighty Yah and Yahshua HaMashiach. We find many that have denounced Yoshua HaMashiach. There are those that literally say that he is a joke. He is of no significance. And these books that have been written or discovered, what we call the Brit Hadassah, or what we call the Renewed Writings or the New Testament, I prefer Brit Hadassah. And there are those that will say that everything that we need is in the Torah and the writings of the prophets, of the Novi. I buy that totally. And so they will say that these books are non-consequential because they have no value. They have no support. And this is the mindset of this generation by many. So that gives them credence to deny Yoshua HaMashiach. So what I wanted to do as I was laboring um, the other day, uh, I began to ponder the Bokhash, the missing writings of the Torah books that are vital and essential. And I said tonight as I was able to labor a little in the Torah this evening, I wanted to teach this message unto Yisrael, the Bokhash. Shefa, the writings, that which has been written of the Torah. And they will say that the writings of Shaul, they are false. Who is a Matitiya? Who is a Yachahana? This is the kind of mockery. And we as a nation, we must be prepared for them. And I say to you, I want you to get your pen, your pencil, some paper, and I want you to take down every khatuv that I express and read from and bring great clarity for you. Are there books that are vital? And I understand that this assault against what we call the KJV. Now listen, Yisraya. I utilize a plethora of translations. And they all have been translated from the same writings, uh, 
of the strolls of Yah, there may, there may be a difference in the, in the conveying of the matter in the language or the grammatics, but they all say the same. The KJV basically say the same thing as many other translations. There are words that, that, that will construe things because we don't understand the definitive and we're trying to read that uh, from, uh, from a confused language. But I look at many different types of writings of the Torah and the Brit Hadassah and I find them all basically revealing the same thing. I want to begin here in the book of Bimetz Bar, the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 21 and verse 14. I want to be gone here. Hallelujah. As this profound utterance of revelation out of the bosom of Moshe, he says unto the host of Yisrael, Wherefore, we met bar numbers, chapter 21 and verse 14. Wherefore it is said in the Sefer, and the Sefer is a document of legitimacy. It is legal. It is a writing, a book of uh, prophetic events, times, seasons, and occurrence. And that is what the Sefer is. We understand a book through a literary or a literal form, uh, a literal and literary but this is what the Sefer of Yah is. So what Yah has written or hatab, inscribed, written down, prescribed, it is for a document of legality of his mindset, his purpose, his will, his desire for Yisrael. He says, wherefore, be made by Numbers 21.14, wherefore it is said, listen now, it says the book, the book of the wars of Yah, the Mil Hakaya, the book of the wars of Yah, what Yah did in the Red Sea and at or in the brook of Arnon. Now this is vitally different than what we call the book of Shemoth, the book of Exodus, or Dibarim, where there's a writing of the wars of Yah. The book, the Sefer, it is a legal document because Yah has sealed it and he sealed it in the book in the heart of the Nobi to write. Kadosh men writing as the Ruach of Yah moved upon them. Is this important to Yisrael? Should we understand and know what is the content of the book of the wars of Yah? That is what it says. It did not say a strip or a writing. It says the book. The book, the Sefer, the legal document of Yah, of prophecy. You say it is Shemoth. And that's how many will answer. But that is not what uh, the Torah says. It calls it the book of the wars of Yah. It gives a and I will uh, even venture to say beyond uh, my own uh, spiritual understanding of this, uh, it gives precise details uh, in an analogy that uh, Shemoth uh, and Dibarim uh, cannot even give Yisrael. We see a small picture of this tremendous battle uh, there with uh, the one that Yah raised up in Misraim, uh, that he may get honor and esteem upon that individual. And also at the brooks of Arnon. At the brooks of Arnon. And this is written in the book of the wars of Yah. There are those that reject the writing of the Brit Hadassah. Then is this book vital? Is the book of the wars of Yah, is that vital, Yisrael? Well, that doesn't constitute any kind of, uh, any kind of, uh, substantial uh, truth that there are other books there. Well, let's proceed then. You're listening to Shemach Yisraya, Riach Daiwit Yisraya, sitting here live. Let us venture unto the book of uh, Yehoshua, Benan, Joshua, Yeshua, Yahshua. It says in the book of Joshua, chapter 10, verse 13, it says, and the Shemesh, or the son, 
it stood t- still. Joshua 10, 13. It stood still, and the moon stayed until the people avenged themselves upon their enemy. Now this is out of the utterance of uh, Yahushua. Is it not written, he said, Hatab? Is it not Hatab in the book of Yesha? Yesha? Is it not written in the book of Yesha? The straight, the upright. The book of Yesha is a book of the uprightness to straighten us uh, and to show us the details uh, of many events. Now, is this written, is the book of Yahushua, Yoshua, is this a part of the Torah? Is this is of any vital significance? Is it vital to us? And yet he mentions here, Yisrael, the book of Yesha. And there are those that reject that. There are those that reject the book of Yesha, just like our whole pagan that call, how she said that she has read the book of Yesha. And there are many that will reject that and say that it is of no credence. But yet this Nobi talks about it, this messenger of Yah. He talks about the book of Yesha. Is it vital to us? Should we teach from that? Is it important unto us, Yisraya? I'm utilizing this to show you the vaya and the importance of the Brit Hadassah. So how can one reject this? And they see this written in the Torah, and they will reject that. And they will give some kind of excuse. And yet when it comes to the writings of the Brit Hadassah, they will say, well, that's not so, this Yoshua, he is of no significance. These are ignorant men. These are not men of Torah. They do not understand the power of Almighty Yah. Again, here in the book of Second Shemuel, Shemuel, Second Samuel, chapter one, verse eighteen. Here is two witnesses. Let every word, let every witness, let everything be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Am I reading out of the Torah, the prophets, the Novi M? Sure I am. Second Sam Shemuel, chapter 1, verse 18. Also, he is talking about Dawid. Also, he, Dawid, he ordered the bow to be taught to the children of Yehuda. It is her top in the book of Yesha. That is where this order to understand the great military power and the might of Yah, it was taught out of the wars, of the book of the wars of Yah. That they were powerfully proficient with the ball. And they were taught. Well, what, what, what writing? Well, out of uh, the book of the wars of Yah. That they could teach Yehuda the beauty, the strength, and the, the very preciseness of that. And it is only written in the book of Yesha. He is the Nobi that talks about this. Give us wisdom on this matter and the value and the importance. So if Dawid, if Shamuel speak it unto Yisrael, and he's given them vital information as to the importance of the book of Yasha. You tell me some of these other books or the prophets or these uh, Bokash, the missing books, they do, they do not talk about Yoshua, of the coming of messengers uh, in, the, in the revival of the covenant or the Brit of Yah in unto Yisraya. How do you reject these books? Are they of any value? They have great value, Yisrael, and great significance. If you will take this chatuv down, first Melachim, first Kings, chapter eleven, and verse forty-one, it says, "And the rest of the acts or the daba." You tell me there is speech and words, utterance 
and things that should be known, the rest of the acts, the daba of Dawid, the Melech, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Shemuel, the seer. Okay, you say, well, that's in the book of Shemuel, the book of Samia. It is. He was the Ra'a, he was the seer. The one that observed the times he watched, he was ready to prepare us with, uh, with, with prophecy. Okay, I will give you that. But I know that there's a greater depth to that than that. Okay, you concur that that's the book of Shemuel? Well, what about, and also, in the book of Nophan, the Novi. Where's the book of Nophan? You give credence unto Shemuel, Shemuel. He was a seer of the Ra'ah. He had learned from the book of wars. He had learned from other writings. He watched. He waited. He looked. And also in the book of Nathan, the Navi, the Nabi. And not only in the book of Nathan, but also in the Shefar of the book of God. He was a seer. He was a Ra'a. He was one that could see beyond. The observation of what Torah and the writing of the book, he could see beyond that. He saw the depth of the Ruach that you don't find men today that have. You don't find that today, Yisra'ya. So if the book of Shemuel is of great value and significant, then what about the book of Nathan? Is that book of any value? Does it have any relevance for us as a nation of people? Also the book of God, the truth of Yah, the seer. Should we as a nation, Yisra'ya, that's why this teaching is entitled, Chabachash, Chatorah. What is Bachash? It is that when, as we watch and wait and we look to seek to find and as we understand these great mysteries, uh, these laws, vital, important part, we should have men that are able to labor upon their faces uh, and cry out. And when these books, when they open them, uh, they can speak with authority uh, to say, nay, it is not the writing of God. It is not the writing of Nathan. It is not of their writing. But the Ruach, that is what, a re'ach, what he sees. He sees beyond just the visual perception of things. So the book of Shemuel, the book of Shemuel, hallelujah. The writings of Shemuel and all of this, if that's important, then the, what about the book of Micaiah, the book of Yokohana? All of them are important, Yisra'ya. What about the book of the wars of Yah? They are important. Every last one of them. I want to, I, I, let me go back. I meant for you to turn to first Dibri Chayayim. First Chronicles 29, 29. I just noticed that myself. That's all right. I get excited. I get boisterous. You're listening to Shabbat Yisrael, Riyadh Daiwit Yisrael, sitting here live, uh, teaching on Bachash, Shefah Torah, the missing, the lost book, the inspiration of those books uh, that gives great, great and great uh, significance to the credence of our prayer and our worship before Almighty Yah. And we should seek out that material by the methods of Almighty Yah, and it must come. Uh, through the seers, the nobi, the prophets, who have the spiritual intuition to know by the writings and can read it and tell you that it is of Yah. And I can tell you whether it is legitimate or false. Hallelujah. I do apologize. In the book of 1 Chronicles 29, 29. The book of Chronicles 29, 29. 1 Chronicles. Now the Acts or the Dabah, the speech, the utterance of Dawid, the Melech. 
first and last. Behold, they're reading in the written in the book of Shemuel, the seer, the Ra'a, the prophet. In the book of Samuel. He said it also in the book of Nathan. First Chronicles 29, 29. Where is the book of Nathan, the Navi? And also the book of God. Are the writings of these books that we are able to, to, to ascertain now? Is it the writing of Yah? Can you tell whether it is of a, the mind of Almighty Yah and Yoshua? You cannot denounce the book of Nathan no more than you can denounce the book of Shemuel. You cannot denounce the book of God. It is written in the Torah. It is written for the experience of, of Yisrael. There are many that will say, well, the book of, of the book of the Acts of the Shulishians, uh, uh, Shulishim, that's not important. Uh, the book of Yehuda, Revelation, that's false. Uh, then you will say the book of Nathan is false. How would you know whether it's the book of, that that is true? Yah speaks about it in the Torah, in the prophets. Does he not speak about the book of Nathan? Does he not speak about the book of God? Will you reject that, my friend? Are you a damned fool? They reject the writings of Shaul. They say that Shaul denounces Torah, lies from hell. They reject the utterance of Yahshua HaMashiach. These same men could not even tell you whether the book of, uh, the book of Yesha, the book of uh, Nathan, the book of God, whether it, whether it has uh, authenticity to it. They cannot tell you. Because these are not spiritual men. I'm not afraid to say it. Did you all get that? First Dibarim, uh, Dibari Chayim, First Chronicles, 29, 29. Where is this? In First Melachim, First Kings, eleven forty one. And the rest of the acts of the Dabad, the speech, the utterance of Shalomo, and all, not some now, all that he did, not just in the book of Mishli, and all that he did, and his wisdom, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the act of Shalom Ho? You say that's Mishli, that's not so, my friend. It is the book, it is a Sefer, it is a legal document. That Yah has put his oath, his seal upon it. He has put his oath, his authority upon that. Where, where is the book of the Acts of Shalomo? Do we have men spiritual enough that they would know whether there is authenticity to the writings of the book? I would bear the difference from you. Because many men today, they are these that call themselves prophets and and mighty men, they are as shallow as duck's water. And that's the truth, Yisrael. We must, we must as a nation, the Bakhash or the Shefa, the lost books, we must find that which is missing. That's why we must allow, we must have the same mind. That was in Yeshua HaMashiach, we must have that mind. Oh, by the way, those that reject Yeshua, they believe in every principle of the Torah. I do too. Because Yeshua is uh, the persona of the principles uh, of the Torah. So may I beg of thee to tell me where is the book of the Daba, the Acts of Shalomo? Will you please tell me that? It did not say the Chronicles, uh, but it said the Shefa, the book of the Acts of Shalomo. Also, will you find me and tell me, and will you give credence that the book of Nathan or the book of God, uh, it is written by the very instructions of Yah, and tell me how do you base that upon what principles, uh, upon one spiritual revelation? Tell me how they reject the books, the writings of the Brit Hadassah. These are ignorant men. They have not the life of Yah in them. Because when a man has the life of Yah in them, 
They have the Ruach of prophecy. And your shoe is the Ruach of prophecy. Reject these dirty beasts. You don't sit down at the table to try to interact with them. They're not going to receive truth. You put the book of God before them, they will denounce it. Can I proceed? Again, in the book of, I want to go continue in the book of uh, Second, Dibri Chayayim, in the book of Second Chronicles. This is beautiful tonight. You're going to learn something. If Riyak Daiwit has never uttered anything that has enriched your heart, this will tonight. All right? You can't go around the Torah of Yah, can you? Second Chronicles 9.29 Hallelujah. It talks about now the rest of the acts of Shalomo, the first and also the last. Are they not written again? The witness here in the book, this is in the Torah. Is it not written in the book of Nathan? Why is this vital? Why would the messengers bring this to light? To us, Yisrael, the Navi. And not only that, but listen. Where is the Nebuah? The Nebuah. Nebuah. Where is the prophecy? The prophetic writing. The prophetic utterance. The speech, the writing uh, of uh, Achiyah. Achiyah. Who is Achiyah? Well, it tells us that he was a Shiloni. You tell me the prophecy, the Nebuah, the prophetic writings of this messenger? Would these men know today if it was of Yah? Do they have the spiritual proclivity to say that this is Achiyah? This is Achiyah. This is the writing. This is the writing of Achiyah. Why would this be written? If it's not important. Is there something in the utterance of Achiyah that is vital to our growth? Is it essential to our knowledge of Yeshua HaMashiach? This is an ignorant generation. And I don't back down. I don't back down easy. No matter of fact, I don't back down. Is the writing of Achiyah, is it a value? He uttered a prophecy of great monumental importance. That Yah says, write it in the chronicles of the writing. That Yisrael will not become uh, drunken. Where is the writing of Achiyah? And he says, not only that. There is something that is very vital. He says the chazuth, the vision, the revelation of Yidi. Yidi, the seer against Yerabuam, the son of Nebat. Yisra'ya, raise up the messengers, Ya, the true prophet. I am not a prophet. I'm not an obi. I'm a simple messenger of Yah. Yisra'ya, you that are listening to me tonight, is that important? Is the book of Nathan in the same breath here? Second Chronicles 9, 29. Is the book, the rest of the Acts of Shalomo? People ask questions, did Shalomo go to hell? Did he do this? Did he, where did he end up at? You ever had that question asked? How do we understand the consequences of Shalomo unless we find the prophetic writings of Achiyah? Unless we understand the very revelation, the visions, uh, the Hazuth uh, of Yidi. Are they important for us as a nation, for us as a people, Yisrael? Or are we that blinded? We don't believe that Yah has any true messengers today, uh, and these liars that say, listen, that the writings of Shaul and the writings of Timothy, the writings of, uh, of, of Gilgal and Revelation, it's not important. Is this writing, Achiyah, is this writing important? Is the writing of Yidi important? 
It's the writing uh, of Nathan, uh, the writings of God, uh, the writing, uh, the prophecies. Uh, are these books important? Well, there is no validity uh, to Achiah. Let me give some credence to Achiah. If you were with me in the book of First Melchim, First King 11, 29. I want to give some validity to Achiah in the book of First Kings, chapter 11, verse 30, 29. Listen to this. And it came to pass at the time when Yeroam, Yeroboam, Yeroam, he went out into Yerushalayim. It says that the Novi Achiah, the Shiloni, this prophet, found him in the way, and he had caught himself with a new garment, a simla. And the two were along in the field. There shall be two in the field, one is taken and one is left. Watch this. Right there in the prophet, prophecy of, Mel, uh, of, of Matitiya, we are in an ignorant generation. And the men that are leading us, they are ignorant, they are ignorant men. Listen to the writing. First Kings 11.29. I read it again. And it came to pass uh, when Yeroam went out to Yerushalayim. He went out. That the Novi Achiah, the Shiloni, found him in the way. In what way? Hadarek, the way of Yah. And he had clawed himself with a new garment representing, representing the renewed power of the covenant in the revelation of Yahshua. And the two were along in the field. And Achiah caught the new garment that was on him. And he rent it in twelve pieces, symbolizing the whole united house of Yisrael. Listen. And he said unto to, uh, Yeru'am, Take you ten pieces, ten tribes. This says Yah, the sovereign master of Yisrael, Behold, I will rent the kingdom out of the hand of Shalom. and will give you ten tribes. Is it vital that we understand, men that are true messengers, that we as a nation, we grant unto these men time to pray and to labor before Yah? That Yah will open up their wisdom to the knowledge of even uh, the prophecy of Achiah, the prophet. And also the vision uh, of Yidi. Are these books not important? When this man stood before the king. Hallelujah. Just like Achiah stood before Reboam, Yeroboam, Yeroam, Yoshua stand before the presence of Almighty Yah. To bring the kingdom back into the Ichat of Almighty Yah. Yah did this. He took the kingdom out of hand, out of the hand of Shalomo. We understand some of the acts of Shalomo, but we don't understand the power, the revelation of those acts, Yisrael. We must find, we must understand the books of Nathan. And God, the books of the Acts of Shalomo, that we may understand the very nature, the veracity, or we don't understand what's written in the Torah. It doesn't cause us to change Israel. Hallelujah. Achiyah, his visions, are they important? The Shiloni, the visions of uh, Yidi, the prophecy of Achiyah. You know, we read this book, we don't even know this is in here. Why? Because first of all, we don't give Yah time. I will have people, there are people that will call, getting, you, you know, they think that I should just take, just stop doing everything. The maintenance of the community, just to take hours and talk to them. Well, I don't chit-chat with Ach. I don't chit-chat with Bath of Tizayon. I don't have time for that, Yisraya. And they will not even lift a brown penny to help in the labor. It takes indigent time to understand these things, Yisraya. I will perceive for you that, uh, that this is enriching. Uh, hallelujah. 
Let, let us turn our attention uh, to Second Debray, ha, yeah, Second Chronicles, chapter twelve, verse fifteen. It says here that the acts or the daba, the writings, the teachings, uh, the acts, the fullness of Rehoboam uh, of Rechabam, Rechabam, first and last, from his birth unto every transition in his life. He say, are they not written in the book of Shemiya? Yes, the man's name imply that he, he is heard by Yah. Who is this Shemiya? Is the writings important? Just like the writings of Shaul. The writings of Matitiya, the writings of Yachanan, the, 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 the writings uh, uh, of, 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 of Marcus Lucas. Have you ever heard of Shimeya? The writings of Shimeya? Or is this your first time? You see, it is so simple. You have read it, but this is your first time uh, hearing the simplicity of it. The book the Shefa, the legal document of Yah. Is the book of Shemiah, is it of any value, Yisrael? Surely it's great value. So is the book of Metitiah. So is the act of the Shalishia. The writings that Yah said, I want this inscribed in the chronicles of the Acts. What? So when those that are my true messengers are and those that I have given command over Yisra'ah, that I want them to have the ability of freedom to labor, to seek out, to search, and to find. Most true men of Yah don't have that. Because their expectation is greater than these wicked, dirty dogs out here today. True messengers do not live rich. They do not have, they do not have a the abundance of substance like many. Why? Because the enemy knows. Just like he knew you're sure he did not know the power that would be revealed in his death. Because if they had known, they would never kill him. And so the enemy doesn't even know the, the strength that should be revealed uh, in the death of even a man like me. That, that uh, even though that uh, his voice is not heard by many, their ears, they turn a deaf ear to it. But he is going to, through the voice of his simple truth and messengers, he is going to bring Yisra'ya under the Brit, the covenant, under the power of his arm, and his right hand is Yoshua HaMashiach. The book of Shemiya, the prophet. And also, again, he talks about not only this prophet, he says, but he talks about uh, Yidi. He said, and of Yidi the seer concerning uh, genealogies. And there were war between Raboam and Yeraboam continuously. So is this one, Shemiya, is this of great value? The writing, Second Chronicles 12, 15. Now the acts of Raboam the first and the last, they are written in the book of Shimeya. The one that is heard of Yah, the prophet, the Nobi, and Yidi, the seer concerning uh, genealogies. Do you think all the genealogies are in Chronicles? That's why those that were asked you concerning Revelation, uh, when you see one of the tribes and altering there, see this book here of Idiya, uh, 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 Yidi, uh, and the book of Shimeya, who knows what's in there? To answer what's in Revelation with preciseness. These corrupt men trying to answer it uh, out of their doctrines uh, that they are pieced together to allure and to draw people. But it doesn't work that way. Second Chronicles 11.1 1. Now Second Chronicles speaks of this man. 12.15 Now let us read a little about this. Shimia. Second Chron Chronicles 11.1 1. And when Roboam came unto Yerushalayim he gathered from Beit Yehuda and uh, 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 Binya, uh, Binyamin. Let me stop there. We have a go.
Shabbat Shalom, who's calling? Where are you calling from? This is Tov, my friend. All right, my friend. This is Tov. All right. Back. We're going to bring it out tonight for you, all right? And no one else. We're going to make it plain. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. All right. Beautiful, okay? <clears throat> Let us check out Shemaya. Shemaya. Let's see if there's any writings on him that constitute that the writings of the book of uh, 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 Shem- Shemaya is of value important unto Yisrael or Yidi. Second Chronicles, chapter 11, verse 1. And when Roboam came unto Yerushalayim, and he gathered from Beit Yehuda and Ben Yamim, a hundred eighty thousand chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against Yisraya, that he might bring the Melkut Agand unto his control and his power. That Yah, by the Novi, even written in the book of Shemaya, Shemaya, that Yah said it would be. So he's he wants to alter the word of Yah, but the word of Yah came. To Shemaya, the man of Yah, saying, If Yah sent a word like this to this Nobi, and there's a book for us, do you not think that we as a nation of people, that as even the old Kiddush was saying, the ignorant, we need to have the strength of the Palab, we need to be prayed up and fasted up. So when a true messenger come, we will know it's a true messenger. We will strengthen the hand of the warrior of Yah that these mysteries of the unknown things will be made known. The clarity of Yahshua and the might of Yahshua will be made known unto us. Yah says, Speak to Reboam, the son of Shulomo, Melech of Yehuda, and to all Yisraya in Yehuda and Binyamin, saying, This says Yah, you shall not go up nor fight against your ach, your brother. Return every man to his house, for this thing is done of me. I have divided the house. You cannot reconstitute it. Listen, you find these liars out here telling everyone to move to Yerushalayim. You find these liars out here saying that they're going to bring the house together. They are damn liars. This dead of Yah, a powerful man like Reboam, Yah says, tell the man, tell him I said, he used one man to tell him that. He used the Nobi. What is the beginning of that conversation and the end? What is there that is vital to our strength at? To know that uh, the reconstitution of the Bay of Yisraya is going to be done by Yah and the way Yah is going to do it. Uh, and it's going to be a great strength of His beauty and nations shall rejoice. For this thing is done by me, says Yah. I have brought the, this, this division. And it is said, and they obeyed the word of Yah. And return from going against Yeroboam. So why should we fight against? Why should I go against my precious Ach, your Okop? Why? Yah has done this. Well, there is a separation. Was there not a separation with Marcus, Lucas, and, Sha- and Shaul? And yet it was the will of Yah, was the hand of Yah. We don't see that, Yisrael. We need men that are free, that are free from the laborious labor of this life with the cares and concern to live simple and to live in simplicity, to seek out the wisdom of Yah. That's the truth. Is this book of any substance to us? Or is this some kind of deceitful lie? Is it? Should we as a nation of people strengthen the hands of those that are of Yah that has wisdom, not these damn liars and charlatans? You don't want a man like me. You don't give a damn about one like me. I have an email from our Lord Kim says, Preach please be strong in this teaching. 
and bless my nefesh. Don't stop. Bring it all so we can begin to think soberly and seriously about this path. There are a huge reason the books are not present. We have to call out to Yah to bring restore to restore these books from out of the dark for his people. That's why Yah raises up messenger and men of strength. That's why we can see when the prophets, how they restored honor and integrity back in the house of Yisrael. It's not going to be done. He did not give the Torah unto the nation individual. He gave it unto one man. He's not, he's not, he's not even granted this truth to everyone. And that's the truth. Here's another email. Shalom Riach Dawid. Barach my love. With truth tonight. Toda ya for you. And I am enjoying this truth tonight. Shabbat Shalom from Achot Rafea. Riches of Yah. Rest upon you, my Achot. Yoshua's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In these books, there are vital wisdom that we must have. I want to read from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 34. It says, Now the rest of the acts of Yehoshaphat, he is one that Yahweh has judged. Yah has judged. It says, first and last. It says, see, open your eye, behold, behold, are the acts of Yehoshaphat important? These were melech over the house of Yisrael. He said, are not these, are they written in the Sefer, the book of Yahu? You tell me there's a book of Yahu, son of uh, Hawani, who is mentioned in the book of the kings of Yisrael, not the book of kings, but the book of the kings, also in the book of kings. Yehu, Yahu, you tell me there's a book of Yahu. Yahu, the son of Heani, and the acts of Yehoshaphat, are they important? Is this book of any validity? Is of the same validity as the book of Petitia. The book of Nathan has the same power of inspiration, strength, and truth of Yah as also the book of uh, Marcus Lucas. The book of Revelation, Giliana. Well, i like to have witnesses to what I pour out here. Here's another witness of Yehu, Yahu. Yah is he, his name implies Yah is he. So Yah says there's a book written. He uses the word written, Hatab. It has been inscribed, it has been written down, Yisraya. First Kings 16, verse 7. First Melachim, first Kings 16, 7. And also by the hand of the Navi, Yahu. The son of uh, Ha'ani came the word, the Daba, the Torah of Yah. He said, against Basha. We understand who Basha was. He was a very vile and pugnant, wicked king. And he was the king of the northern tribe or the kingdom of Yisrael. That's who he was. He was a vile individual. He was one that had power or a dynasty because he had killed the second king, uh, Nadat. And so the word of Yah came unto Yehu, Yahu, and against his house. Against whose house? Against the house of Basha. Even for all the evil that he did in the sight of Yah, provoking him to anger. With the words of his hand. And being like the house of Yeraboam. And because he killed him. Yisraya are their acts and deeds that are written in the book of uh, Yahu, Yahu. That we as a nation need to have. Do we not need the 
beautiful ark and those that their lifestyles are not wearing diamond rings and diamond watches thousand dollar shoes thousand dollar suits by the way my issue makes my clothing that Yah grants in the heart of his people to grant unto them the ability whereby they can labor and they can teach and preach from the aspects of these great writings. From the book of Yahu. Should we know what the book of Yahu says? Just like we need to know what the book of Gileana says. And so those that deny Yahshua, they deny the Brit Hadassah. And they were denied this as well, my friends. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will proceed farther. <clears throat> you just don't have enough, man. I tell you, I have more than enough. I have more than enough to turn, uh, to g- give you a plate full tonight. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let us look quickly here in the book of Second Debra, Debri Ahayain, Second Chronicles 35.12. It says, and they removed, they swore, or they turned back, or turned aside apart, departed. And they removed the burnt offerings that they shall give according. That's what they did. This is what, among the house of Yisraeli, the Levi, the division of the families of the people to offer unto Yahweh. As it is written, not in the book of Shemoth, Adibarim, but in the book of Moshe. And so did they with oxen. The book of Moshe. We see the very interaction between Yah and Moshe as we see there in the book of Shemoth. Ibarim, he was taken out. And then Yahushua, Yahushua, the power is ascending. But what about the book, the Sefer of Moshe? Well, that's the book of Exodus. Exodus. That's not what it says, man. It tells you there in the in the Torah, Exodus or Shemoth. It tells us here, there's a book called the Book of Moshe. I did find witness to that. I found witness in other writings. Hallelujah. Of the Book of Moshe. And I will read that for you. All right? I will read that. We have one email from our uh, Tiffany and uh, our Achwim. Uh, tonight. Please don't stop. You house me the riches of your recipient. You all there in your sure. Hallelujah. This is from our Akros. These books I will have from those who are blind. Only your sure can heal only those of a contrite heart. He who answer a matter before he hear it, shame upon him. Those who will not look are indeed blind. Well, Yah has blinded their eyes, my Akros. So true. We are to judge the messenger. Uh, he that is spiritual is judge. He that is spiritual judge all things. He is judge of no, he is, he is judge of no man. If those refuse to listen and judge, but the line upon line and the line upon line, precept upon precept, he little and there little, uh, little. Be a Berean. No, it's, it's one thing. I understand what you're saying. They seek of truth. It's one thing that the Berean did. They believe. They believe first. Then they search the scripture not to disprove. They search the, the, the Torah, the Hefe, because it was so astounding what they were saying. They were saying, man, is that there? Writings of that degree, I've never heard it so excellent. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, and those of the legality of the Torah, they don't talk like that. It was not that they didn't believe, the Bereans believed. The reason there must be line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, because we are damn wicked people. You should not have to speak to us that way. He should suffer, command us, and we obey. That's why he said, I got to draw it out for you. You're so damn wicked. And we are damn wicked people. I'm not backing down for this damnable wicked world. Damn it all. He's going to bring it down. As I said, as we were just reading here in Second Chronicles 35, 12. 
concerning the book of Moshe. I want to read this out of the book of Ezra. First Ezra. Ezra. Chapter 6, verse 18. It says about, about the same matter. Same matter. And they set the Kohim in their divisions. And the Levi, the Levites, in their courts. For the service of Yah. Which is at Yerushalayim. As it is written in the book of Moshe. Now I know this wicked generation is not going to receive that. I know that. Yeshua came to reveal unto us the power of Yah's imat. Yah withhold back nothing from them that walk upright. Are we a people of uprightness? Are we walking upright, Yisraya? Are we full of our facetious, corrupt, wicked ways? Tell me. I know we are self-grandizing people that dignify our wickedness. Let me proceed on here. I want to, let us look here at the book of Melchiah. 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 Hallelujah. The book of Melchiah. Here in Melchiah 3.16. He said, And they that Yarephiah spoke often one to another, and Yah listened and heard it. And it says, And a book of, listen now, it says, Shefa of Zikron. The Zikron. A book of Zikron was written. Hata. Where's the book of remembrance? Oh, that's the Torah. That's not what this says. And the Zikron of the book of remembrance, Melchiah 316, was written before him. For them that feared Yah and that Hashab, that thought upon his Hashem, his name. When one Hashab, they think, they, they esteem, they calculate, they count upon his name, they, 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 they invest, they, come on, they make judgments in the power of that name. Where, where's the book of remembrance? The book of Zikron. The book of Zikron. To Zikron, to remember, to keep in your heart. Well, it is the Torah. Oh, the Torah is a book of remembrance. But this prophet was after Moshe. And he said, and he gives us an account of a book that was written before Almighty Yah. Yah's hidden this from the wicked. He has hidden this. And these men will never understand the nature and the power of the writings of Yah. Because they reject, they reject Yahshua. These beastly pigs and unclean men that have no strength of Yah at all. Hallelujah. You're listening to Shemach Yisraya, Riach Daiwit Yisraya. I will proceed. Can I move, Father? All right, I shall. Hallelujah. Here's a writing in the book of Yehuda, the book of Jude. It talks about the prophecy of Hanak. Now, all of these writings are, 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 are out of the are, out of the Brits uh, of the Old Covenant. If that has validity, then why this doesn't have validity? In the book of Jude, it says, and Hanak. The seven from Adam, he prophesies of these, he prophesied of these saying, Behold, your sure cometh with 10,000 of his kiddushim. That's why they don't want to read out of the book, uh, 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 out of the book of uh, Hanak. He talked about your sure. These are deceivers and liars. These are wicked men. They will reject the book of Nathan, the book, the book of uh, of 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 of, of, uh, of Yidi, the book of uh, of of Yah. All of the books that I've read, they will re reject them. And yet they will reject the book of of Yahuda. Yahuda said, "Hanak, he prophesied." In the book of Hanak, Yeshua cometh with ten thousand of his kedoshim, and so do the prophets. So. There's Yohanan and Gilyana. And yet they reject that. They will say, Yah doesn't need Yahshua. You are a damn fool. 
I ask you a question, you beasts. You are spiritual bastards. If Yah doesn't need your shoe, can I ask you a question, my friend? I know you're ignorant. And you're just repeating what you heard someone else said. It's not because you have knowledge. It's not because you have wisdom. I ask you a question, you ignorant beasts of hell. If Yah doesn't need your shoe, why does he need him? I ask you a question then. Why did Yah have to take a little lamb? And cause blood to be put on the doorposts of the house of Yisrael. When the death milach passed through. Tell me, man. He didn't eat a lamb, did he? But he used it, didn't he? This is a jackass generation, people. These are stupid men. They are blind men leading the blind. And they both fall into ditches. They're not going to listen to anyone. Why did he need to, Why did he need a prophet? Why does he need a prophet? What did he make man? He sure as hell doesn't need him, uh, but he needs man. You don't even understand the, the whole significance of the matter. That's why you can speak out of your damned by ignorance. And that's why these men speak with such damn ignorance. Well, y'all will not break the Torah. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Somebody having a baby, that's man. If a man went into another woman uh, uh, and, and, and she had a baby, well, what they would do, the Torah speaks of that woman, if she did not cry out, uh, then they would destroy the woman and the man. But if she destroyed her, they would destroy the man. When Yah speaks unto us, his word, uh, his word brings volume from us. Yah kills too, doesn't he? Does he kill babies? Did he kill babies in Sodom and Gomorrah? Does he destroy babies? Did he break the Torah? Did he move? Does he move? Does he kill? This is a stupid generation. This is a stupid generation. These men are stupid. They're damn, damn right stupid. You all get this out to some of them, please. Please get it out to them. I'm not fearful of these men. Hallelujah. They have a form of the power of Yah that they are right, but they deny the power. They are, they are self-righteous swines I will not apologize to these beasts and you better not as well my friends hallelujah so what about the book of uh, Hanach is, is it important if that book is not important then neither is the book of, Yahu, uh, 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 of Yehuda or the book of Kepha or the writing unto the assembly of Halushia the Kedushim nor is the is the book of Shema, Adibari. Because every word is pure. Every word that Yah speaks is Tachoah, clean. Look what it says in the book of 2 Dibri Ha Yahim, 2 Chronicles 13.22. 2 Chronicles 13.22. It says that the rest of the acts of Abayah and his ways, and his sayings, it says are written in the story of the Nobi Yedu, Yedi, Edu, the one that witnessed for Yah. All of his acts of Abayah. It is written there in the book. Well, that doesn't give any credence anything, uh, well, let's look at verse 1 of the same chapter. It says, Now in the 18th year of the king Yeroboam began Abiyah to reign over Huda. And he reigned three years in Yerushalayim. His Ima, he had a beautiful mother. His mother was named Mikayahu, Mikayahu, who is like Yah. And she was the daughter of Uriah. Yah's my light. So he makes mention of this Abiyah. And yet the story are written and the profoundness of his nature's acts are written in the book of Yiddi. Idu. That's what's written. So if the book of Idu is spoken of in the Torah, and you tell me that the book of Enoch, Hanak, and the book of Yehuda, and the book of Hefa, and the book of Yasadakeya, and the writings unto, unto Ar'ach Timoteya, 
That's not important. You are a foolish man. Again, here, and I, I want us, uh, uh, the validity of Yidu or Yidi, uh, Yidu. I, I want to bring some clarity and some, some validity to him in the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 1. It says, in the eighth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word of Yah to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Yedi or Edu, the Navi, saying. So he has some credibility here with me. Because even this Novi talks about this Novi, this prophet. Even a prophet identifies the lineage of the prophet. We must understand that Yisraya. We must. Are there other books I'm, I'm going to proceed? Manasseh, here in the book of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 33, 17. 2 Chronicles 33, 17. We're talking about here uh, Manasseh, the son of King Hezekiah of Yehuda. And himself, he was king over Yehuda. The writings here says in verse 17, in 2 Chronicles 33, 17, Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places, yet to Yah, the sovereign master only. Yisrael Yah was brought to the knowledge of truth, and they began to operate in this pulsating power of Yah, and they offered their offerings only unto Yah. And it says this, now listen. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, And his prayers to Yah, his sovereign ruler. And the words of the seer, of the Hosech, of the visions, spoke to him in the name of Omar Yahweh, the sovereign ruler of Yisra'ya. Behold, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Yisra'ya. Now you go to the writings of first kings and second kings and show me the writings of that. There's no writing in 1st or 2nd King. Prove me wrong. There's no writing of him. There's no writing of this. His prayers also, how Yah was moved by him at all of his sins and his trespasses and the place wherewith he built high places and he set up groves and graven image. Behold, he was humble. Behold, they are written among the saying of the seers. What seers did I read about tonight? Yidi, Nathan, what about them? You think that's not important to know? Second Chronicles 22, 26. Now the rest of the acts, now the rest, the remainder of all he did of Uziah, Yah my strength, first and last, did Yeshaya, did Yeshaya now, Isaiah, the Novi, the son of Amos, write. That's what it says now. You hear that? All right. It says here in the book of Yeshaya, Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 1. It says, the vision of Yeshaya, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Yehuda and Yerushalayim in the days of Uzziah, Ahaz, Hezekiah, king of Yahuda. Now that's all he writes about concerning Uzziah. He tells us that it was a sinful nation, a people, this is in verse 4, dropping down, a nation, a people laid with iniquity, a seed of evil doer, doers, children that are corrupt, having forsaken Yah, they provoke the Kadosh one of Yisrael Yah, to anger. And they are gone away. But if you read, if you began there in chapter 1 of, of Yeshaya and read, he doesn't talk about the first and the last acts. He gives us a little synopsis of this. You must read it. <clears throat> but it says, uh, it is written of the writings of Uzziah. It was written. The first and the last acts. Oh, I know what we think that means. That he was king and then he died. No, there are acts and there are events between that that uh, that that prevail. Uzziah was a king, uh, 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 and then uh, 
uh, uh, of Yahuda, his reign was like, what, 50, 52 years, Yisra'ya? It was not just something in a day. So where are the writings of all of that? Ya wrote them down because they were important and they were valuable, Yisra'ya. I want to close with a few more chapters. I want to read this here. It says in the book of Esther, Esther 10. I know, just, just hear me, in the book of Esther. It talks about Esther 10 and verse 1. And the Melech Ach Ash Varush laid a tribute upon the land and upon the sea. And verse 2, and all the acts of his authority and of his might and his declaration of the greatness of Mordecai. Now he talks about the greatness of Mordecai. We know in the book of Esther where he talks about, the, uh, about Mordecai, but, but the greatness of Mordecai. Wherefore, whereunto the king advanced him. Are they not written, listen now, the book of the chronicles of the kings, of the Median, of the Medes and the Persian, of Mordecai, as he commands, he instructs Esther. Come on, Yisraya. I want to close with these two last writings in the book of Colossians, chapter 4, verse 16. It says that when this letter is read among you, cause that it to be read also in the congregation of the later descendants, and that you likewise read the letter from, or the writings, the epistle from Laodicea. Where are those writings, Yisrael? Well, you say that the Brit Hadass is no value. But then what about the writings I read all out of, of, of the Torah? And the Nobi. What about those, my friend? This is an ignorant generation. My last one I want to close here. It's about uh, Elah. In 1 Kings, Melechim, 1614. It talks about the rest of the acts of Elah. And all that he did. Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the king of Yisrael? There's a book of Chronicles events. You will not find anything in the book of Chronicles concerning uh, Elah. Nothing. So are there books and writings? Does not Yah put his Torah in the bosom or his word in the heart of, of true Yisraya? Does he not give that unto his true messengers? That they bring out things in such an excellent way? We need that. Yah send the Nobi. Raise up the prophet, the mighty man, the messengers of strength and truth. We need that. I'm appalled at these young, weak men today. They're weak. They, even their ish or their wives have no strength at all. Y'all will not give a man the rule and authority of his house unless his own house is in control. It's appalling. I love my ish, y'all. She knows one thing. Uh, that's a man there. There have been liars that say that, uh, you know, she has rule over me. That's so stupid. You can't talk like this with a woman you wear in a skirt. You got to have, as the old boy was, you got to wear the pants in the house. You understand? My woman doesn't wear pants. I'm the, I'm the man. May the riches of your rest upon your Yisraya. I will be upright and early in the morning. I have something in my heart. Yah is placed by the Ruach. And the witness of Yahshua is there because it is the Ruach of prophecy. You need to join us as we continue in the Mark of the Beast. And man, six, 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 until Shabbat's morning, uh, I say to you all my friends, uh, and also my enemies, uh, to my friends, Shabbat Shalom, and to my enemies, I'll see you. Shabbat Shalom Yisrael.